Hi everyone, this is Les with Team PyTorch, and today we're going to go over uh, using mixed precision inside of FSTP. So as usual, I've got some code to run through with you here. Um, start off just verifying the version. I'm running on the uh, July 11th uh, nightlies. Um, so mixed precision support in FSTP is done by creating a policy. And what you want to do is when you import FSTP proper here, you'll import this mixed precision class. So that's basically what we're bringing in here. Once you import that and have that available, uh, you can then configure it. Uh, there's three components inside your um, configuration. Specifically, you can customize your parameter precision, your gradient communication precision, and your buffer precision. Um, so the available options are, of course, uh, FP32, but uh, BFLOAT16 and FP16 as far as the um, half precision data types that are available for you. So you can also mix and match, and that's what I've tried to show here. Uh, in this case, we'd be keeping the parameters in bfloat16, uh, doing our communication in float32, and buffer in float32. So you can mix and match that. Uh, for reference, if you don't pass anything at all, then it just defaults to floating point32. Uh, so for example, you don't necessarily have to specify if you don't care about the buffer, you could leave it like that. <coughs> and you end up with uh, bfloat16 for parameters and communication precision. And then since there's nothing there, it would default to FP32. So that's just for reference. Um, but anyway, so we've got two sample policies here, a bfloat and a mixed policy. Once you have your policy created, you literally just pass it in during the FSTP init. Um, so this is the, the mixed precision param. We're going to pass in our uh, bfloat policy here. And uh, that's it. So after that, you're underway uh, internally with uh, mixed precision. Um, I do want to show you a couple data points here. So in, uh, from training a T5, uh, 3 billion parameter model, saw significant speed ups uh, by leveraging bfloat. Um, there will be some variance, uh, but uh, you know, close to 2x is, is pretty typical. Um, the other thing to note uh, as well is that because of the slightly lower precision, a lot of times the first epoch or two uh, B float will be behind. Uh, but in this case, we show that you ultimately end up at the same place. Uh, and of course, the difference is that you have a massive, massive speed up uh, in terms of uh, your training time. So the other thing I wanted to show <coughs> excuse me, is the uh, quick refresher or visual, so to speak, on the uh, mixed precision types themselves. So got floating point 32 here, the default, uh, sine bit, 8 bits of dynamic range, and 23 bits of precision. Um, TF32, which I'll cover a little bit uh, as well, uh, is basically 8 bits, so same range, uh, 10 bits precision. FP16 has a much, much lower dynamic range, which will introduce the scaling situation that we'll have to address with the sharded gradient scaler. And 10 bits of precision, and then here's uh, B float, so 8 bits of precision. So again, same exact range, it's a literally drop-in replacement. Uh, and then slightly lower, well, <laughs> lower precision here uh, versus FP32. Uh, I've had very, very good success uh, running with bfloat16. Um, so anyway, uh, as far as some details with using mixed precision here, uh, I wanted to call out that your batch norm, if you have it, uh, will automatically be converted to FP32 uh, for precision. Uh, that will override automatically. You don't have to do anything about it, but just kind of an FYI. Uh, the local radiants during your back propagation are also always uh, FP32. So again, uh, you don't need to take any action for that to happen. <laughs> Other item is that your models uh, will always be saved in floating point 32. And the idea there is maximum portability. So even if you're training in uh, bfloat16, uh, your final model will be in floating point 32. And again, with the idea of uh, maximum portability. Um, one gotcha with bfloat16, uh, you do need to confirm that you're on an Ampere architecture. So that's a 3090, an A10, an A100, et cetera. Uh, otherwise, uh, I personally got burned uh, running on a V100 initially. Uh, it will not complain uh, that you're running bfloat16, but you will be atrociously slow and you won't know what's happening. Uh, so the other thing, uh, so I've just got a, some code here to show you a couple imports, but basically it's a verified bfloat support and it's going to check uh, the um, GPU itself to make sure it's native. Uh, and then on top of that, we're gonna check uh, the nickel uh, communication uh, version to make sure that the communication is supporting uh, bfloat. Um, the simple API is simply torch.cuda is VF16 supported, uh, but that doesn't confirm whether your network can handle it. Also just checks your rank zero uh, GPU. So it's a little bit more comprehensive uh, in terms of that full thing. And I'll put this out as a little, um, importable module that you can use if you wish uh, for verifying. So, but that, the main thing is just you do want to confirm that you have full bfloat16 support before you get going. So let's uh, switch over to FP16. So assuming you're on a V100, for example, um, you do need to bring in Shardigrad Scaler. And so that's what this import is for here. We've got a contextual switch based on the configuration setting. And if we're gonna run FP16, we're gonna bring this in, create an instance called Scaler of our Shardigrad Scaler. And then inside your training loop, <laughs> you need to um, 
take a couple uh, additional steps here to confirm. Uh, once you get your loss, uh, run it through the scaler, uh, and then after the um, optimizer step, or as part of the optimizer step, pass that to the scaler, and then the final update again, so it can adjust the scaling. Uh, so those are the three steps in your training loop, and of course the generic import. So not too hard, but you do need to be aware that there is a uh, actual code change required. Bfloat 16, for example, nothing required. It's a drop-in replacement. Um, in general, kind of best practice, I do recommend using Bfloat 16 if possible uh, for a couple reasons. So um, FP16, at least on an A100 when I was running, runs about 4% slower versus Bfloat 16. Uh, it's likely the cost of the rescaling that's happening there. Uh, and ultimately, uh, the scaler itself is basically kind of playing a bit of a guessing game, how much to rescale. And bad guesses can mean that the mini batch, uh, if it's rescaled wrong, will have NANDs and it'll have to be tossed, so it's a bit inefficient as well. Um, last point to go over, TF32, which is available also on Ampere architectures. <laughs> it's not controlled directly, via, uh, at least at the moment, with FSDP policy. Uh, you can set that directly in code with this API here, torch.backends.cuda.mat will uh, allow TF32. That will specifically uh, run your uh, matrix multiplies in TF32 format. Um, it's not as fast as Bfloat 16, but it is faster than FP32. Um, in general, uh, even NVIDIA will tell you that for maximum performance, uh, A100, for example, has enhanced 16-bit math, supports FP16 and Bfloat 16 at double the rate of TF32. So my general recommendation uh, is, is definitely work with Bfloat 16 if possible. I've had very good success with it, and I would kind of uh, defer to that as sort of the first uh, item if you have access to an Ampere architecture. Um, so. That's the quick summary uh, on mixed precision and FSDP. Uh, and as I said, I will put the um, Bfloat 16 support checkout uh, as part of the tutorial. So you can pull that in if you like and hope that's helpful.